This is a review of the stand mounted speakers, the Martin Logan Motion 15i. Now, Martin Logan are an intriguing company from the USA, founded in 1979 in Lawrence, Kansas by Gail Sanders and Ron Sutherland. Now you might think, where's the name come from? Well, Martin and Logan were the middle names of both of those gentlemen, and they felt it sounded better than Sanders and Sutherland for some reason. And they decided to launch a speaker company. They began in 1983. That was the date of the first launch, which was a pair of rather tall electrostatic speakers called the monolith, because, because they look like a monolith basically which is an intriguing contrast to the speakers I'm reviewing now because the speakers I'm reviewing here are relatively small, about 29 centimetres tall and around five and a half kilograms in weight. Around the back, you'll find a pair of five-way binding posts and the speakers themselves can handle quite a wide variety of amplifiers from the lowly 20 watts all the way up to 200 watts. So you shouldn't have too many problems matching your amplifier with these speakers. They arrive in a gloss black finish. You can also buy a matte white and a red walnut finish, which looks very nice indeed. Sensitivity for these particular stand mounted speakers is quite admirable at 92 decibels, which is pretty good going. Now the star of the show on the front of the speaker and the reason it has the word motion in its name in the first place is because of the tweeter. Now many tweeters placed in speakers of this price point and we're talking 795 here in terms of the price. So that sort of price point down and maybe up to around a thousand or so you don't see many speakers which have exotic tweeters. Normally you'll find some sort of domed tweeter of some sort. This particular model, the 15i, has what's called a folded motion tweeter. Now this is a thin film transducer and basically what they've done is they've crimped the actual material so you get a sort of accordion-like look behind the grill. And what this means effectively is that the company is able to squeeze a quite large surface area into a relatively small space because you've got this concertina effect squeezing it all in. The tweeter itself spans around two and a half by three and a half millimeters and it uses a rare earth magnet made out of neodymium iron boron. And according to Martin Logan itself, the magnet on the rear of this particular tweeter has 20 times more power in terms of field strength than your basic tweeter magnet. If you move below the tweeter, you'll find the mid base unit. This is an aluminium coned unit and if you look at the image of the cone which I'll pop up for you now you'll notice that the dust cap is concave in shape. It's this shape to add strength to the entire cone. The crossover used in the speaker uses polypropylene and low DF electrolytic capacitors, custom wound inductors and thermal and current protection. It also has a name I can't pronounce so I'm going to put it on screen and let you try. Now these particular speakers are, strictly speaking, five ohm designs, but I'm assured by the company that they are entirely compatible with amplifiers ranging from four to eight ohms. So I wouldn't worry about it basically. I started my sound tests with a copy of Nat King Cole's Love and I played a track called Thanks To You. The first rather brief first impression was how easy, in relative terms at least, the Motion 15i speakers were to drive. I had to lower the preamps gain by a couple of notches right from the off. The most long lasting impression I had in those first few seconds was two things. Firstly, the huge amount of space that the speakers were creating in and around the stereo image. The coal vocal was a case in point. There was so much air infusing the coal delivery that his performance appeared effortless and full of enthusiasm. The air and space ventured right across the soundstage from this central point, providing plenty of room for detail to roam. The mid-range insight was just superb. There was a sense of texture, lucidity, and above all, focus that really cut to the core of the vocal delivery here. 
Cole's voice was packed with a focused texture that tracked the tiny changes across his vocal cords with no problems at all. That focus was notable in terms of the later trumpet solo, where the precision of the instrument combined easily and effectively with the human aspect. There was no doubt at all that a human was playing this thing. There were micro faults present in and around the performance that only added to the organic nature of the solo, and that there was real emotion to be had, even during a cursory listen. Bass in terms of heft and mass was good. Nothing more than you might expect from a speaker cabinet of this size, mind you. Again though, the focus from the 15i speakers meant that heaps of low frequency information was forthcoming and what bass was available was delivered with impact and strength. And what about that tweeter? I mean, after all, that's the highlight of the whole design, isn't it? Well, it was a complete joy, it really was. It actually had a large part in the creation of the air and the space that the 15i speakers created. So cymbal hits, for example, were quite ethereal in nature. I then turned to rock and specifically an album from the band Thin Lizzy. The track itself, Having a Good Time, was from the LP Chinatown. And the result, well, absolutely glorious, to be absolutely honest with you, truly lovely. What I got from this album, I can reduce to one word, layers. There were lots and lots of layers. This rock effort provided a delicate, detail-infused acoustic guitar with metallic filigree emerging from it. Underneath that, a chopping electric guitar from Mr. Snowy White. Bass was next to that, and underneath, percussion. Tonally, it was spot on and realistic. And the Phil Linnett lead vocal, that was detached, singing in his own space, allowed to express himself without interference from other frequencies, and every nuance of his delivery was spotted and absorbed by the ear. The Motion 15i speakers also plugged into the emotion of the overall track, so it was very easy to tap the foot here and nod the head there. The production quality of this pressing is pretty good, but the speakers seem to enhance the basic quality, which is never a bad thing. I then turned to CD and I played an album called Regards from Chuck Pink from a guy called Leo Cocky, who's a guitar picker. And Leo appears in my top 10 guitarists list. And I'll put a little button up yonder. Click on that if you want to see who my top 10 guitarists are. This sort of sound source is both simple and complex, at least for a set of speakers, because the plucked guitar strings are quite complex in sound terms. They produce a host of minor sonic fractures that spin off in all directions, and it takes a pretty capable hi-fi system to track them all. But the 15i speakers did just that. Cocky, a true student of the John Fahey style of craftsmanship, manipulated his guitar in a host of imaginative ways, producing an orchestral suite of sounds. Each were tracked well, retaining both form and structure, and without losing control and resorting to a messy, smearing, skidding action in order to keep up. The inherent focus meant that detail was delivered to the ear intact, while excellent instrumental separation also meant that the shy percussion lying at the rear of the mix could also be heard. Now to enhance detail, some speaker manufacturers tend to pinch the treble a bit, or they smear the mid-range, and they use sort of hardware tricks to give a false reading in terms of detail. So a pair of speakers can sound precise, but it's a false precision. And when you push those particular speakers too hard, they can sound edgy and a bit bright. That just did not happen with the Martin Logan Motion 15 eyes. There was a naturalness about the performance from these speakers. The air and the space seem to emerge from these speakers in a wholly natural sort of way. The detail and clarity allowed a bucket load of information to reach the ear with no effort at all, while bass precision and power was retained. These are neutral and balanced speakers, and I think they provide an ideal fit no matter what musical genre you throw at them. The 15i speakers offer great sound and superb value for money. And before I go, I'd just like to mention that down below, I will put a link to my Patreon page. If you can support me, that would be wonderful. There's also a link down there for my Facebook group. You're very welcome to join us. 
There's also another link for my blog stroke website and there's a whole host of content on there too. I'll put some other social media links down there too where I pop up. Maybe you'd like to wave and say hello to me as I pass through. Thank you very much for sticking with me to the end of this particular video and I'd love to see you on the next one. Until then, bye bye for now.